when it comes to persistent earth mysteries. A continuing revelation for me are the insights from many of you who have served in military or intelligence work since World War II and reach out still confidentially to let me know your firsthand knowledge that other intelligences and their advanced technologies do interact with Earth now and have for centuries. One recent contact who asked me to call him simply John Smith is now 74 years old. Back in 1968 to 1969, during the Vietnam War, he was assigned to a U.S. Air Force military installation in Alaska that was constructed only three years after the crash of a flying disc made the front page of the Roswell Daily Record on July 8, 1947. The United States Army Air Force was officially separated into two separate military branches on September 18, 1947. And by 1951, construction had begun near Fairbanks, Alaska, that included the creation of this top secret command post 60 feet underground. The place was called the Headquarters 744th Aircraft Control and Warning Squadron, Murphy Dome Air Force Station, Alaska. Murphy Dome is a 2,930-foot-tall mountain 20 miles northwest of Fairbanks, Alaska, and from 1959 to 1971, the Murphy Dome Air Force Station was a Nike missile defense system in the Fairbanks defense area. Murphy Dome has one remaining facility, a long-range radar station. The purpose is to detect military air threats from afar so that they might be intercepted. During John Smith's work there in 1968 to 69, he had a top secret clearance in order to drive around generals and other high-ranking people. And that top secret clearance also led him down a long flight of stairs to a state-of-the-art, computerized command post, 60 feet underground. In August of 1968, every person at the Little Rock Air Force Base got orders for Vietnam, and I mean everyone. So at the time, my wife was nine months pregnant, and I didn't want to go, so I had a friend in personnel. I asked him to find me an assignment someplace besides Vietnam. He called me up, and he says, I found an assignment that you qualify for. So I went up and talked to him. He says, this assignment is a top-secret base or installation in Alaska. And he says, you can get this if you want it. And I said, sure, that'd be great. He says, well, there's a bad side to this. You have to leave in two weeks. <laughs> so I went ahead and took it. I went home for two weeks in Taylorville, and then I got shipped out to Alaska. To Murphy Dome, Alaska, right? Right. Which is about 20 miles northwest of Fairbanks? Right. And you were there from September of 1968 until 1969? Right. And how did it happen that you learned there was a large underground installation at Murphy Dome? Well, everybody had a roommate, and my roommate worked in the command post. And he told me about some of the stuff that was down there. And One day he asked me if I wanted to go down and see what was going on, and so I told him, sure, I'd go down. You couldn't get to it from above the ground. You had to go outside, and there was a doorway that, took you to the stairs that takes you down below. It was a long stairway. It was about 60 feet underground. And there's guards down there to let you in. And I stood above on top inside the operations area. I wasn't allowed to go down and look at the computers. And my friend stood up there with me the first time and pointed out what everything was. The main reason we were there in Alaska was to monitor Russia 
and see what they were doing because I understand they were only about 250 miles northeast of where we were. And he told me the radar equipment we got here, we can see a pilot in the plane on the runway in Russia and read his name tag and find out what his name is. The equipment we had up there, he said, was that good. That was kind of mind-boggling back in 1968 because they had some really nice computers and monitors. And at that time, the public had no idea what a monitor was or a computer or what they did. But there was a lot of stuff up there. Right now, the government is probably still 20 years ahead of what the public knows about. Right. How many computers were you looking at 60 feet down? There was about three rows of tables. I'm guessing there was probably 24, 25 of them. There was a large screen that had the map of the planet. You could see what was going on in any country on this planet. And then about 20 foot away from that was where the people started sitting Any airplane or object that was in the air came up on that screen, and you could identify airplanes pretty easy, and you could also identify the UFOs pretty easy, too. Why did your friends know they were UFOs? Because evidently the people that were in charge of the command post down there told them what they were. And did he share with you what they said to him? No, you can just assume that they're people from some other planet, and they're there monitoring what we're doing. Did you ever hear from him any explanation for why they would be on that big map at a very sensitive, top-secret location in Alaska, 60 feet underground, and you were allowed to see it? Well... One reason I was allowed to see it because I had a security clearance. The whole time I was in the service, there was never anything that I was refused to see or do. Meaning you could walk into any top secret location anywhere you went? Absolutely. But I had to have the top secret clearance because I hauled the generals and the colonels around every place they wanted to go. Plus, occasionally... There would be a plane that flew in that had classified information, and I would have to go down to the control tower down at the landing field. Usually, two military police would go with me. We'd pick up a briefcase, put it in my vehicle that I was driving, and we'd go to headquarters. And then they would handcuff me to the briefcase and have me carry it into headquarters. And they'd unhandcuff me and take the briefcase, and then i just leave. Okay, describe what you were seeing when you were seeing UFOs, and what was your friend saying to you? The UFOs that came up on the screen, he pointed out to me which ones were UFOs and which ones were planes, and you could tell them apart real easy because the UFOs were kind of diamond-shaped. They usually traveled in packs of three or six, in a V formation, and you would watch them go across the screen, and then all of a sudden they would just disappear and go off the screen. Same way about coming onto the screen. You wouldn't see anything, and all of a sudden they'd just pop right up on the screen. They'd go a little ways, and then just vanish and go off the screen. Was there any part of this map of the entire world, a flat map, where it appeared to be more populated by the diamond-shaped UFOs coming up. Yeah. Most of the traffic was south of South America and Africa. That's where the heaviest traffic was. Why did your friend want you to see this? Because we were friends. And what was his work? He worked at one of the computers that did information down there. I don't know exactly what his job was, but he sat at one of the desks and did computer work. Anytime I wanted to go down, he took me down, escorted me downstairs. I went down there several times. And how many UFOs at a time did you see? 
Oh, it ranged from sometimes 30 to 60 at a time. Yesterday, you said, we never saw them over land. They were mostly over water. Most of the time. There was a few that you've seen over land, but very few. Did you talk with your friend about the implication that if these diamond-shaped UFOs were coming up out of water mostly, did that imply they were coming from a base deep under the ocean? We weren't allowed to talk about it, so we didn't. Yesterday you said there were, quote, rumors aliens were working in Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's the first thing he told me, because when we went down there and he showed me the flying saucers on the screen and kind of poked me and he says, oh yeah, and by the way, the rumor is that there is aliens working in Washington. D.C.? Yep. And did you say who, what, and why? No, (laughs) I didn't ask questions. I wasn't supposed to. Did he even hint what they looked like? No, he didn't. You also said, quote, We had three large radar domes, and large UFOs hovered about 30 to 40 feet above them, and each of the UFOs was 100 feet in diameter. Yeah. Well, there was three large radar domes at the time, and my friend told me two weeks before you got here, these two big disks, about 100 feet, hovered above the domes for 45 minutes. He said everybody was outside watching. We had cameras, but we weren't allowed to take pictures. Did he tell you what his superior officers were saying about the large UFOs hovering over the radar domes? No. Everybody was pretty hush-hush about it. We just didn't want to get in trouble and say something we wasn't supposed to.